you saw what happened in Pittsburgh. What were your impressions when you found out it was somebody who was on your website spewing anti-Semitism? Well, it disgusted me. Um, this is a clear act of terror. 11 people are dead. Uh, and I was horrified to find out that this uh, terrorist, this alleged terrorist, was on our site. Um, I fundamentally believe in the free expression uh, and individual liberty and the fundamental human right for everybody to speak freely. Um, obviously, threats of violence are not included in that, and there are other uh, regulations around the freedom of speech and the First Amendment, of course. Um, but I do think that more speech is always going to be the answer to combat bad speech or hate speech. Were you aware of any of the postings that Robert Bowers had put on your website? Uh, not until the day of uh, when it happened. Uh, prior to that, I was not aware, uh, you know, who he was or uh, what was going on. Um, you know, I think when I discovered it, obviously the first thing that we did uh, was download all of the data immediately and take a snapshot. Uh, I immediately suspended the account because he was violating our terms of service. And then I immediately picked up the phone and I called the FBI. And since then, uh, we've been working around the clock with the FBI and the Department of Justice. Uh, they have praised us for our work, uh, helping them in this investigation. We willingly gave them this information and gave up all of our resources, all of our time, to make sure that justice is served in this situation. Um, and that's what our number one priority is still right now. Um, our website is being unilaterally, unilaterally uh, removed from the internet, and that is not my concern. Um, we'll get it back up and running, but right now my main focus is seeing to it that justice is served and that we're cooperating fully and working with the FBI and the Department of Justice to see to it that that happens. When you say Bowers violated your terms of service, what are those violations? So we have terms of service around and user guidelines around uh, threats of violence and terrorism. Um, and I would consider what he did uh, a terroristic uh, you know, activity, uh, 100%. A gruesome and brutal uh, display of violence. I'm heartbroken. I, I express nothing but sympathy and my love and my prayers. My family has been praying for the past 72 hours for these victims, for these families. And what I think is despicable is that the media, the mainstream media largely, has been focusing on me, has been focusing on our website, and not focusing on honoring these victims, on not focusing on exposing this monster and condemning these acts of violence, um, instead trying to scapegoat uh, both myself uh, and our website, uh, which has a community of over 800,000 people from all different races, all different backgrounds, all different countries, from all over the world. You know, there was a study done uh, by some academics a few uh, months ago, and they literally looked at every single post on our website, uh, tens of millions of posts, every, every post ever made. And what they found is that uh, around 94% of the posts on our site did not contain any hate speech, any hateful rhetoric. Um, it was just normal, free expression, you know, people talking about the news or sports or whatever, posting cat pictures. Uh, and they examined Twitter as well, and what they found is that Twitter had 97%. So, Twitter has about 2% you know, less hate speech than our site does, but Twitter uh, is allowed to be on the internet, they're allowed to be on app stores, they're allowed to have hosting providers, et cetera, um, and they are not blamed uh, when, for example, the, 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 the bomber uh, who was mailing all these bombs to all these, these people was on Twitter and he was making direct threats to people and they actually reviewed his posts after someone reported them and ruled that it didn't go against their guidelines where something like that would have actually gone against our guidelines and we would have acted on it immediately. So I think there's a clear double standard because you know, every single day we read about live stream murder on Facebook. We read about human trafficking on Facebook and Instagram. We read about uh, pedophiles exchanging child pornography on these websites, on these social media platforms in much higher scales. This is happening every single day. Um, there are bad people in the world and they are on every social network. They are on the internet. Uh, and for you know, the media to attack us and blame us for the, the actions, these horrific terroristic actions of one man who bears the sole responsibility for this. No one else. Uh, you know, this man did this. We didn't do this. Um, you know, uh, none of, uh, no one else on the internet did this. This is the actions of one individual. Uh, and we're going to, like I said, see to it that we work directly with the Department of Justice and the FBI to make sure that uh, justice is served in this case. Do you have any protocols in place 
and this is a question that seems to come up a lot with social media, sure. not just Gab.com. Do protocols in place where you can identify when there are hostile comments being made or in the instance of Bauer's anti-Semitic comments being made where there's hate being spewed, sure. the, thr the threshold maybe of violence has been crossed yet, a threat of violence. But anything that would red flag do you have those types of protocols? Uh, so we do have a, a user flagging system that allows users to report posts that they believe are violating our guidelines. And our user guidelines are effectively our constitution, right? And our guidelines are based on uh, our interpretation and our reading of the First Amendment and Supreme Court rulings on the First Amendment. So uh, threats of violence are, of course, not acceptable. Um, you know, posting your social security number or your credit card or private information, otherwise known as doxing, is not acceptable. Um, we don't allow spamming, uh, malicious activity, things of this nature. But beyond that, we feel that everybody should be able to speak their mind freely, as long as you're not, uh, you know, causing immediate danger or, or immediate harm or threatening uh, these such things. Then you should be able to speak your mind. And what the the thought process behind this is that this type of speech, this type of hate speech, this type of hatred, this type of, uh, you know demonic, uh, you know, viewpoints on the world and on certain groups of people should be exposed. Um, you should not post the, or, or push this type of speech and push these type of people into the shadows because if they cannot express themselves with words, I fundamentally believe that they will inevitably express themselves through violence. And I don't think anybody wants that. So I think that the world should see this stuff so that we can condemn it with more speech. It should see the light of day, number one. And then number two, uh, it also gives law enforcement uh, a great way to track uh, and hopefully pre preemptively uh, act before these people act out in violence, right? So, and, and finally, if they do, uh, you know, like in this case, uh, now law enforcement have a mountain of evidence uh, to make the case to prosecute this man and to see to it that justice is served. You know, if you push these people into the dark web, uh, or even off the internet entirely, um, you know, they're going to go to their local bar uh, and, and or, or meet in person with other people that share their views. You're not going to completely shut these people out. You know, shutting them out is not the answer. Um, using our speech, good speech, uh, to counter their bad speech or hate speech, uh, I think, is always going to be the answer. And I think that's what the First Amendment is for. When you develop a site like Gab.com, what is the audience in your mind that you're trying to identify to be a customer of yours? Sure. So uh, when we built Gab, um, I felt that Silicon Valley was unfairly censoring conservative viewpoints, Trump supporters, etc. But I didn't want to build uh, an echo chamber, uh, a, a conservative only website. That wasn't my plan. Um, I wanted everybody to be welcome and I wanted everybody to have the fundamental human right to speak freely. Uh, from day one, we've been consistent on that fact. We've said everybody's welcome. We don't scan for political ideology at sign up. Anybody can sign up with a username and, a, and an email address and a password, right? Um, but I think what happened is uh, a lot of people who were inevitably being banned from all of these other social networks had nowhere else to go. So we ended up, and of course, they ended up being Trump supporters, conservatives, libertarians, and yes, some people on the far right. Um, but again, I'm not scanning for political ideology, so everybody was welcome to join. And I think it's inevitable, and I think it's understandable to see how those people joined when they're being kicked off and censored and treated like children across the rest of the internet. They're just looking for a place to speak their mind, uh, share their maybe politically incorrect opinions, or um, you know, meet with like-minded people who share their values. Right now, Gab has been dealt a serious blow, as you've detailed, with those who would handle the payment, subscribers, those who allow that venue to get Gab out there. Does Gab have a future? Absolutely. We're down but not out, Mark. Uh, we are working around the clock right now. Like I said, our top priority is to see to it that justice is served. So right now, my focus over the past 72 hours and going forward until they don't need us anymore is working with law enforcement. Once that's done, once they don't need me anymore, then my focus is getting the website back online. Um, we have been systematically removed from the internet without any appeal uh, and in many cases without any cited reason. Uh, by nearly every possible service provider that we had. Uh, multiple hosting providers, multiple payment processors, um, you know, 
uh, our blog, right? Like uh, things that you would never think uh, w would, you know, do something like this. And I think it's a it's a very scary time uh, in the history of the internet and in the history of uh, free speech uh, to to see something like this happen, where there are three or four companies that own and control everything in Silicon Valley, uh, colluding together to systematically remove a website and a community of 800,000 people. We get 9 million plus visits a month off the internet. Um, we will be back. Uh, we are building everything essentially from scratch on our own from the ground up. Um, and right now, as of right now, our conservative goal is to get the website back online by this weekend uh, and then continue to build out from there. It is going to take us probably a few weeks to a few months to get back to where we were. Uh, but the site will be up and running uh, within the next week. If a critic were to say Gab is just anarchy and there are no repercussions for anything that anybody says, what's your response? Well, I think that's demonstrably false. Uh, we have numerous examples that the media has actually covered of us enforcing our guidelines. Uh, one that I can think of is banning Weave, who is an infamous online troll who posted uh, what I you know, interpreted as a terroristic threat, which we have zero tolerance for. So. You know, that's one example, but there are a lot of others on a day-to-day -day basis where we're enforcing our guidelines. Um, we're not, it's not anarchy. Free speech is not anarchy, and I think a lot of people misinterpret that. Um, they think that free speech means you could say anything and do anything you want, and that's just not true. Free speech is absolutely regulated uh, by uh, Supreme Court rulings and by existing law, and it's our goal to follow that existing law and to see to it that no illegal activity uh, is being done on our site and that we take enforcement action on it uh, immediately. Do you have a ballpark figure of how many community members you would have removed from GAP? Uh, so we ban a lot of bots. That's primarily our, our number one in, in terms of volume. So we've banned over 100,000 accounts in total. Majority of those are bots. Um, and then there are thousands of you know, people that we have removed from the site for violating our guidelines in other ways, such as doxing, posting private information without someone's consent, uh, terroristic threats, um, you know, direct calls to violence and incitement of violence. Uh, we enforce our guidelines every single day, uh, and we have very uh, common sense rules that our community understands. And actually, our community members help us to spot these things as they're happening, report them through our system so that we can immediately take action. So how did you find out that Bowers was a, a community member and that he had posted what he had posted? Uh, so somebody uh, DMs me, uh, direct messages me, and said that he was on the site, alert me to this. Uh, I instantly went and checked it out and confirmed. And then I immediately backed up the data and suspended the account and contacted law enforcement in that order. So when somebody direct messaged you, was it another community member or somebody you know personally? or? Uh, it was someone that, yeah, actually has a Gab account, is an active Gab member, yeah. and was actually listening to the police uh, radio and heard his name, then did a search on Gab and on Twitter, and, and they found his Facebook account as well. And I think that's important to note as well, is that he was not only on Gab. You know, he was on other social networks, and yet the focus of this entire thing has been on Gab. So I think that's really unfair, and uh, as I mentioned earlier, there are plenty of terrorists and murderers and uh, criminals that are on these other social media platforms. I haven't attempted to see, uh, I haven't attempted to look into Bauer's background at all, but do we know, did, did he still have an active Facebook account or has, yes. that, been has that been taken down? Do oh, I'm not sure that? about that. No, I've been, <laughs> been a little busy, but. Uh, no, don't tell us. Don't tell us. Okay. Uh, yeah. Good? Yeah.